If you've been a longtime subscriber to this channel all about the science of homes, you know that we traditionally have not talked much about water performance. And since we're building this 100-year house for our family and telling the story of the science of homes through the building here, we wanted to try and learn as much as possible about it while we were at it. So we partnered with Eric Bernal of Elite Water Systems, uh, who is now a good friend of ours, and he taught us all kinds of things about this. When these machines showed up, we actually didn't really know how they were supposed to work, how big they were going to be. You may remember the unboxing video where we took these machines out of the box and we were thoroughly bewildered about what exactly we were looking at. So it looks like it's just a tower of plastic. And in fact, all of these are actually robots. The assembly of this system was something that I was not competent to try and do. So they very graciously came out and helped us to install this stuff. Let me go ahead and show you all of the components that make up our water purification system here and the testing that shows what it's doing. All right. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this TDS meter on. You can see how it's zeroed out. And now we're just gonna put it right here in the water. And it actually tells you what that number is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put five drops of the hardness indicator in there again. It's going to turn uh, one or two colors, either blue or pink, pink indicating that there's hardness. Okay, as you can tell, it turned pink. With the chlorine test, I'm going to go ahead and take five drops of the chlorine indicator. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's got lots of chlorine in here. And then when we're done, we're going to see the difference. We're going to see how much uh, chlorine we take out of there. So in this room, which is our laundry room, but it's also our water purification system room, we have the three quarter inch water pipe coming out of this wall. In the crawl space, I basically made it so that I knew that this room was gonna have the things arranged in some interesting way. And so I just wanted to make it so that all the water comes in here to be treated and goes out on that side. So we come in, we hit the charcoal filter, goes out of the charcoal filter and into the back of this big guy, which is the water softener, which also has the salt reservoir that sticks right next to it. And then out from here to be distributed to the rest of the house. I'm gonna show you on that one as well, but how it works is you take the lid off here, you're gonna see this cam. What this cam does is it spins around counterclockwise and it opens up these little flaps. Those flaps open up in a series order to allow it to either backwash, rinse. Um, in this particular case, that's really about it. I'll show you a little more on the softener, but the way it does that, and I know you're asking was, if you look close enough, you see these little gaps? These little gaps here, this sensor reads those gaps. If you get a camera view right here where my finger's pointing, you're gonna see that it has a zero. And when you look at the teeth, you notice how some teeth are wider, some teeth are smaller in sections. It just depends on when that cam moves around to open up those series of flaps for backwash, rinse. Wow, like that's that. crazy. Again, it's going to, it has a series of gears. It's going to use these teeth to open up these flaps. These flaps open in a series of order to where it's going to be backwash, rinse, but you also get brine draw. That's where you get the salt tank from. Here, the brine draw, when to pull the water out for the brine and when to put water back in. So the difference with the Pro Elite versus a traditional meter system is it's not going to give you an exact amount of gallons prior to regeneration because it's taking a reading that accounts for fluctuation and hardness. So for example, well, your water here was at about three grains per gallon. This is a 48,000 grain count system. So on your traditional meter system, you would take that 48,000 grain count, divide it by the three grains per gallon, get about 16,000 gallons of water through the system before it regenerates. That could be a little bit different with the Pro Elite because if the water hardness goes up or down, it's gonna adjust for it. But that gives you a good idea of approximately how many gallons of treated water you're going to get before the system has to regenerate. So it really depends on the hardness of your water. Now, I wanted to show you where the salt empty. The salt tank the system will maintain the water level. Homeowner never has to maintain water level. Only thing homeowner has to maintain is salt. 
So I want you to see where it's empty because I'm going to get ready to fill that thing up with salt. Mm -hmm. And then we can go over usages and how often, where to keep it full. Where That's as full as it gets? Yep. It only has to keep about three gallons of water in there for the hmm. system. Interesting. Mm -hmm. There is a, what I like to call secondary safety feature on this thing. If we pull this little cap off, right here you will display the float assembly. On the float assembly, this is how it works. So you have the brine line, what we call the brine line connected into here. This is what actually puts water into the tank and what will take water out of the tank when it needs to regenerate. The way this works is it has a double, uh, double feature on this. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to turn it upside down so you can hear it. There's a little ball in here. What mm -hmm. that does is when the water gets fully sucked out of the salt tank, this ball will fall down so it doesn't catch air in the line. You don't get air in the system. The other feature is when it puts water back into the tank, if for whatever reason you have a pressure issue, loss of water, or let's say there's a main break and something gets clogged in the lines and it comes into the system. The second feature is the system may fill up with, with water, but there's a float. When this float lifts up, it shuts off the water so that water does no longer go inside the salt tank. So it can't come out the top. Correct. Any brine connection you're taking for this salt tank, either here or here, you always want to make sure you tighten it down because if that seal doesn't get airtight, you can get air. When you get air, that can cause air to get in the system, it'll cause cloudy water, it can cause the system to do not work properly. If it's catching air, it won't suck enough brine solution to do a proper clean. So, even when you tighten these by hand, I always like to come here, and you don't have to force it. You just keep turning it with the pliers until until it stops, like right there. See, it's stopping. Yeah. And then we're going to do that here as well. A lot of our homeowners don't understand that it's not the salt that's cleaning your water. Uh, what the salt's actually doing is it's actually refreshing the resin so that the resin is rinsed and the resin can treat the water. So, for example, when we first turn the water softener on, there's no salt necessary for the water to immediately feel salt soft. But once the beads become saturated, the resin beads, that's the media in the system, they become saturated with the impurities, that's when the system draws a brine solution, and that's the salt water rinsing the resin out. So the salt in this water softener is only used to rinse the resin, not to treat the water. So salt, on our particular system, the beauty of it, no particular brand, no particular type of salt. Meaning like if you look at this salt here, it says bright and soft, and it says salt pellets. You can use pellets or you can use what they call rock salt or rock coarse salt. On the system, it's not brand specific. The only thing I will tell everyone, make sure you are using sodium chloride. You want to use sodium chloride. The reason why I say using water softener salt and not potassium chloride, there's a difference. So if you use potassium chloride, it will clean your resin tank. However, it takes twice the amount to clean the same amount of resin as it would salt. So, you're obviously going to pay $30, $40 a bag for just one versus this is only five, six bucks. And it's going to take, instead of, this system takes about nine pounds to clean this system with salt. If you use uh, potassium chloride, it's going to use 20 pounds of salt. So you will have to adjust your program. So you will have to, yeah. So you will have to adjust some programming. You'll have to make the adjustments for potassium chloride. You're spending more money and it's going to take twice as much. And the benefits of potassium chloride aren't it strong enough for someone to use potassium chloride. Unless the main concerned. yeah the main concern for using potassium chloride is if you you know have hypertension, high blood pressure, your doctor says, hey, I can only have X amount of milligrams of sodium per day or per meal. In that case, I would always, always, always still get a softener, use water softener salt, get a reverse osmosis. Because even though the system is treating your water, it won't take out any sodium that the city puts in. We always recommend that you follow the recommendations of your doctor, and um, if you have any questions about your sodium intake, talk to your doctor about it. So we have four bags of salt in there. That is going to be the equivalent to, in this particular bag, is 160 pounds of sodium in here. It's filled up to right about here. With your home and the amount of usage you're going to get, this should last you anywhere between four to six months. Okay? The highest I would ever fill it is going to be right here. Threaded bolt, nut. And the lowest I'd ever let it get, four to six inches from the bottom. Always check it once a month. Just be on the safe side. 
Now each of these machines needs to be programmed. That's what makes them so smart is that you need to put good information in at the beginning. So when you first set it up, you're gonna tell it what time and day of the week it is. And then you also need to set what time of day it's going to what's called backwash or regenerate, which is basically just cleaning. It's got a self-cleaning feature in it so that you get a lot longer lifespan out of the resin of the water softener and out of the charcoal, the carbon filter uh, media in here. The media is the filter basically. So the time of day that it's gonna be cleaning itself is important because you don't wanna be cleaning it right in the middle of the day when somebody's using a bunch of water because then you're not getting clean water out of it. Uh, but on the other hand, if you put it for four o'clock in the morning and your water softener is right next to your bedroom, which in this case it is, our master suite is right behind this, then it might be loud enough to wake you up. You can choose between one day, every one day it'll clean itself, or 99 days, which seems like a big span. And this is again what you rely on an expert consultant who uh, hooks you up with these machines to kind of advise you on what to do. We had it set on every seven days. We expanded it to 14 days. I may even go to 30 days based on the test of the water. And um, partially the test is how it tastes. The cleaning process basically involves spraying water in reverse, basically, which is what the backwash is. So it basically pushes water in from the bottom and it floats all the carbon bits and the media in the water softener as well around in the water, scrubbing it and washing the impurities off. Then it sends that water down the drain. Same thing goes over here on the water softener. You set all of those uh, features and you can also set on the carbon filter the length of time that it's going to backwash. And so all of this stuff, in my opinion, is like you gotta live with it and, and tune it as it goes, especially for us because we've never worked with these kind of machines before. The negative effect of getting a system too big for the size of the home is the system won't regenerate as often, yes, but when that system is just sitting there and it's stagnant, you're gonna get odors with your water, you're gonna get taste with your water, and you're also gonna get color. I've seen it happen. You'll turn on your faucet and you'll get basically apple juice out of your faucet. No way. You do not want that. We got the reverse osmosis system all hooked up. I mounted it up here because we had, we had run a drain line up to the uh, cabinet above us here. So I mounted it just so it wouldn't put any tension on that line. But we have our inlet side here. This line runs through our sediment filter. And then from the sediment filter it goes to the pre-carbon. From the pre-carbon goes to the post. Then when we get out of the post carbon, it goes through the membrane. At that point, that's when it's gonna separate the, what they call product water uh, or reject water. Reject water sounds negative, but it's just not quality enough for reverse osmosis. So that's what we have our drain hooked to. If you notice where my finger's at, this little blue clip is a little white line. After the water gets separated from the membrane, it goes through this white line, goes down this yellow to this tank that you see right there. That tank, is used as a pressure vessel. Stores the water, pressurizes it. When you turn on the faucet upstairs, water's gonna shoot through this yellow line, through this post carbon here. This post carbon is a polishing filter. It takes out anything for odor or taste that may pick up inside these tanks. Huh. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a filter just in case to make sure your water is tasting absolute perfect. Then the one that I kinda got hidden here, this is called a calcite filter. So what happens here, when you're getting reverse osmosis, you're getting pure water, pure H2O, nothing else. What that does is it lowers the TDS. Our reverse osmosis systems, when I've tested them, they're gonna usually range anywhere between seven and nine TDS. The industry standard for TDS on a reverse osmosis is gonna be less than 50, five zero, hmm. okay? So, what we're gonna do, this calcite filter, since we got this system hooked up to a growy blue unit, we need to put some minerals back in so that when you're using that growy blue for carbonated water, we want to make sure we have a little bit of minerals put back in for that reason. Regular RO cold. Mm -hmm. Sparkling water. I just press the button. Just press the button on this one and yeah. it'll light up green and then press it again, it'll turn off. And then you have your chilled. There we go. 
and then you can even feel it how cold it is. <laughs> Three, four, five. Okay. And you can see that it's not pink, it's not red. Yep, definitely blue. Take my chlorine indicator and put five drops in again. Do you remember before it was very, very deep yellow. Now there's practically clear, no chlorine. So I'm under the house and I wanted to show you the one piece of equipment that does not seem to be very plug and play. Um, that's part of our smart plumbing system here. And it is this, the leak detection system. I found a bunch of reviews uh, on YouTube and none of them seems to mention that it's a pretty intensive user participation that is required. So when you set it up, having kind of experienced commissioning process with other pieces of equipment, I thought that this thing would ask me, hey, go and flush the, the furthest toilet. Tell me what to call that. Flush all the toilets, run all the sinks. You know, that kind of process I would be familiar with. And during install, it'd be a lot easier to do. It seems like right now what the technology is set up with in the app is that you have to go in, it kind of logs things and says, okay, well, this, it flowed through at this certain pressure differential and at this flow rate and the temperature changed this much or something like that. And, um, and it wants to learn from you, the user, the actual occupant. So builders, just be aware that like, if you're gonna be putting this in, it is gonna require a fair amount of learning and participation from the homeowner in order to actually work to provide the auto shutoff feature, which I think is the main thing that this is gonna provide. You can't really track your usage like per month. I can see per day that this thing thinks that the toilets in my house are the biggest water user. Um, so I have to go into what is in one day because of pandemic, we're all at home all day long, 163 plumbing events. And I have to correct each one of them. It's running a plumbing test right now. But uh, what is probably gonna happen is that people are not gonna really be able to take the time. So I think that it's probably, the software is still under development. Probably they're still tweaking it uh, to try and figure out. But the water softener and RO system, because they run on weird schedules and not very, not consistently, it are very confusing to the fin. So just know if you're gonna have a whole system that's also gonna incorporate this, you're gonna have to spend a fair amount of time you know, helping it along. You're gonna definitely wanna disable the auto shutoff feature in the beginning so that it can learn what your house is doing and also learn from you. The last piece is testing those total dissolved solids, which was an interesting test. Uh, I love test instruments. I've never met one that cost $10 on average. What we're gonna do is the same thing that Mike did early on. Rinse this out a few times. Make sure there's no dissolved solids inside the cap. We started at 63. The water softener brought it down to 52. So that's not a huge reduction in the total dissolved solids, but we were starting out with water that was fairly clean. In other parts of the country, you would have the, the beginning number be in the hundreds which becomes yuckier and yuckier to try and drink that water. This water already was starting out like fairly clean. Let's see what the reverse osmosis filter does. Wow. Okay, that's a lot less. Reverse osmosis is coming in at eight parts per million of dissolved solids, which is incredibly low. And again, that eight is only because we're adding back the calcite with that extra filter that Mike added at the end there. So this is a pretty interesting experiment. We're gonna spend some time with this water and see if we can taste the difference between the reverse osmosis and the normal just softened and charcoal filtered water. We will give you updates on how living with these machines is going and um, also tracking their performance both on the water usage side and on just what it's like on our appliances if we see you know, scale build up the showers don't need to be cleaned as much. All that stuff is, you know, it's a system just like everything else in a home. So thank you very much for coming on this journey with us. Please make sure that you're subscribed so that you can explore a lot more about the science of homes in general. Comment as well if you have anything to add about any of these systems because there are a lot of other experts out there that we would love to get more input from. Tune in next time.